bless your name. Bless your name.
We're so glad that you're here today. And we have a very powerful lesson for you today. I'm just excited about what God is doing all around the world from wherever you're watching. Uh, if this is your first time tuning in, I just want to let you know that you've just tuned in to At Three with me. And um, we're excited to have you. We're excited to have you. I uh, want to make a couple of announcements before we go into today's lesson, letting you know that, um, as you know, we are getting ready for uh, the graduation and the celebration, and I want the bumblebees on this page to be a part of that celebration. However, I don't want you to procrastinate in getting your tickets because this is not going to be a gigantic building. I want to keep it in, intimate and personal um, because I want to be able to visit every table at the banquet and so that it can feel as if you are my guest for real and not just in a big building with over a thousand people and um, I don't get a chance to even speak to you and you have um, invested that kind of money to sow a seed into my life for a banquet ticket. And so I appreciate uh, all of you who have already readily um, responded, but many of you on this page, I don't want you to wait until the last minute. And then you're calling me saying, mother, I can't get in and can you, because it's not going to be a large place. The graduation is free. The entrance to the graduation is free. And the ticket price is for the banquet. And that uh, banquet price is um, set because uh, we are celebrating me. And um, there was a time that I used to be, you know, very intimidated about saying that. But uh, based upon the fact that the Bible said that a laborer is worthy of his hire. And um, when somebody gives you their spiritual, you are to bless them with your natural. And so I appreciate all of you all that um, deem it worthy to celebrate with me and to celebrate uh, on my behalf. And so I'm inviting you to get your tickets to the banquet and that's going to be October 27th and 28th. 27th is a graduation, 28th is a banquet and it's going to be held in Atlanta, Georgia. Those of you who are in the Columbus, Georgia area, I'm going to be there next week. And um, you don't want to miss this event. It is going to be powerful. I will be preaching on Wednesday and Thursday night. I believe that's the 9th and the 10th. And I'm inviting you to be a part of that. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be awesome. We're going to be posting the flyer about it for the rest of the week so that you can get an opportunity as a bumblebee to meet me there. Uh, so much is happening. If I forgot something, I think my staff will eventually give me a note to help me to remember. But today's lesson, today's lesson, um, it's really um, my, my, my prayers before I came on today and while sitting and um, looking over and reading over the notes and, 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 and just refreshing what God has given me. I just, oh, I can't even begin to tell you the magnitude of where we have landed with this scripture in Isaiah the 11th chapter and the first through the third verse. And in reference to the seven spirits of God, and um, I'm, I'm really asking the Father today to, to really help me um, convey his mind to you because that is the reason why I'm sitting here, not for my own agenda, but to convey the mind of the Lord. And um, if you've just joined this page, or some of you have been on this page now for one year, uh, we just celebrated July 2nd, one year, you know that this hasn't been one of those prophetic pages where I've sit and, and begged you for money and asked you for seeds. So I, I'm, I'm sitting here because it's the Lord's agenda. And I'm here to be faithful to what he has called me to do. And so as we begin to study the seven spirits of God, 
and becoming very intentional about our next move. And, and this time we don't want to, we don't want to fumble the ball. We don't want to, to, um, to miss the mark. And so I've been asking the Lord for spiritual strategy in understanding what it is he has given all of us to do. Um, give me the strategy as to not only what it is you have called me to accomplish, but also what am I to expect as my attack? Because the enemy doesn't come from out of nowhere. Um, he's very strategic in how he attacks. And he attacks because he's not the initiator of the attack. I want you to hear this. He's not the initiator. He didn't start the fight. God is the initiator. And the fight is, the fight is started the minute there is a prophecy given, the minute there is a word spoken over your life, the enemy is reacting. He's reacting to what the Lord uh, has spoken. He's reacting because when the Lord speaks something, he does something. He doesn't speak it and then do it over here. The minute he speaks it, it's done. He does what he speaks. Are you hearing that? He's speaking it because it is done. He's speaking it because it is done. Because it's coming from his mind. And in his mind, all things are complete. And so he's not speaking the word over your life, and then he's going to do something. He speaks what is done. Did somebody just get that? My God. He speaks what is done. Somebody says, well, I got a word from the Lord, then it's done. I got a message from heaven, then it's done. He's not going to do it. He has already done it. And so now the attack comes because of what the Lord has done. The anger of the enemy is stirred up. And hell is activated because of what the Lord has already done. And so... The enemy has one final chance to steal this victory from you. He has one final chance to steal this victory from you. And in that chance, he is depending upon your carnality. Like, like we have trust in God. And the Lord has to trust us with an assignment. The enemy is trusting the fact that you will remain the way you all have always been. And that's carnal. And what did we say carnality was yesterday? In the realm of limitations. In the realm of limitations. In the realm of incompletion. Like the scripture we read last week when he said, I have something against you because you have not completed. That's why I've repinned that, that, uh, that video to the top of the page this, this morning because it hit my spirit again. God said, I want you to go back and hit that some more because what you're going to teach today is going to be connected to that. The enemy is trusting you not to be spiritual. He's trusting the fact that if he has a door open, that door is going to come in the realm of the fact that you have swept the temple. You have started straightening up your life, but you haven't allowed the Lord to wash you. That's number one. All of these different factors is intertwined in that one thing. Because without the washing, there would be repetition of failure. Without the washing, failure is the inevitable. 
discouragement is the inevitable. Why? Because the Bible said that the Lord will reveal his divine mind, his wisdom, to the righteous, not to the people who sweep. Did you get that? Well, somebody said, well, I beg the difference because I look at what we consider to be the secular world and, you know, they, 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 they come up with, with all kinds of witty inventions and da-da-da-da-da-da and it and all things created, um, created by God and it, it, it's God doing yes. But that's not how the Lord ordained for you to become the manager of the miracle. Yours will not be delivered to you through the process of sin. That's not the avenue that was chosen for you. I'm sorry. Don't shoot the mailman. I'm just the messenger. He chose your avenue to be the saved way. To be the wash way. And you will never get it any other way. Because outside of that way, it's iniquity. And outside of that way, it won't last. It won't last. He said, because the blessings of the Lord maketh rich and addeth no sorrow with that. Yeah, you got people out there that's doing it. And some things are principle based. Some things will happen whether you're saved or not. But when we're talking about miracle people, we're talking about people that my only avenue to get what God has for me, Dr. Bynum, it has to be a miracle. Then this is your way. This is your way. And so, for that reason, he began to talk to me as to why when we become Christians, we feel as if we get a pass. In other words, I don't, you know, I don't have to do it the way other people do it. Well, let me back this up for a second because I read something about um, the attacks of the enemy against the power of strength and what that attack will entail. And one of the things that um, became one of the antonyms for the word strength was loop half-heartedness. And half-heartedness, one of the definitions for half-heartedness was lukewarm. And so then it brings you right back to Revelations 3 and 15 and 17 where the Lord was said, I would that you be hot or cold. Because being just sweat is causing you to become lukewarm. And now the enemy is depending on God to keep his word. And God said, if you are lukewarm, I have to spew you, eject you, discharge you, eliminate you, put you out the game. You're not in the running anymore. You're not in the race of the Lord anymore. And so the enemy doesn't want us to be on fire for God. He wants us to be lukewarm because he's depending on God and he's going to challenge God about you. He's going to say to the Lord, she's lukewarm. And according to your word, you dispel those that are lukewarm. You spew them out. You vomit them out of your systems of favor. They get expelled. They get a dishonorable discharge out of the realm of faith. And so for that, we want to pass. And when you start looking at everything that God has done throughout the scripture, throughout the word, how did people get to that completion? How did they get those victories? I mean, we all know that the hand of the Lord came in. We all can see that God did some incredible things. But how did they get there? How did they get there, though? But how did they get? How did they command that kind of attention? So he took me to one 
one one story incident in the Bible that that um, have intrigued us for years, and, and that's why I keep telling you, you know, don't become familiar with the scripture because when you become familiar with the scripture, you you really miss the original intent of God because then you take it as a story. So, oh, I don't heard that before. And I don't care how many times the Lord leads you to read something. If the Lord leads you to read something you have already read, then apparently there's a revelation in there that you have not gotten yet. And so the Lord is deeming it necessary to have you to repeat that reading. So you always approach it with a fresh mind. God, I read this. I got it written down here, the date that you gave it to me five years ago, ten years ago. I read it again two years ago. I read it again last week. I read it again yesterday. But you want me to read it again today? Okay, because there's something that you want me to get that I'm not getting. I'm missing a point. So he takes me to the story of Esther, and he starts letting me look at the story of Esther, and he said, you know, even though there was a plan to destroy my people. And even though they were down to the last wire, I want you to see that the person that I used had to be prepared for that miracle for one year. For one year. For one year because of the area that they lived in. Because of the Persian Gulf, because of the windstorms that they would have, because it was it was dry and desert uh, desert type of atmosphere, the skin was prone to be crackly and and and, and crinkly and and wrinkled and sores and and diseases and 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 all kinds of um, uh, funguses on the skin. But every woman didn't have to encounter this. Everybody don't have to go through what you go through. Everybody don't have to deal with the things that you deal with. Why? Why is it that we can look over here and say, well, why ain't she going through that? Well, why is always I got to go through that, da, 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 and this one over here like they just sailing on? Why, why it look like this and right here don't never look like they going through nothing? And God, every time I turn around, I'm, I'm just being hit from the left and from the right and, and knocked upside my head. And sometimes I can't feel like I'm, I, I don't know whether or not I'm going to come. And why it look like everybody else look like they have a, you know, a husband and two kids, a boy and a girl, a dog and a cat and a white picket fence at a house. Why is it that I have to struggle on the couch, in the project, struggling to keep my house, struggling to keep my car. Why is it that there's so much warfare where I'm concerned? What is it about me? What am I doing wrong? What am I, who am I? Is this going to be my plight? But every woman wasn't called to that. Because every woman wasn't called to confront, to be confronted, to sit in front of a king. Every woman wasn't chosen to have a window of opportunity to get ready to manage a miracle. My God from Zion. No, everybody didn't have to go through that. But she did. She did. Because she had what it took. Because she had the basics. You're being chosen because you have the basics. The warfare is because when God chose you, there was something already in you that can do this job. Lord have mercy. Her number one, her number one gift was she was beautiful. And God said, I could use that. But in all of her natural beauty, in the, in in her ability to be able to portray that beauty. It wasn't the end of her beauty. She had to go and get beautified even to another dimension. Are you going to hear this today? Are you going to hear this today? Are you going to hear this today? It's always about God taking you to another dimension. I didn't say, I didn't say realms, realms as we know. Because there is a difference. A realm is land. A realm is, 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 is territory. A realm is territory that is owned by a king or a queen. It's rulership of the earth realm. 
But the divine realm, the divine realm is the choosing and the choice of God. The divine realm is the spiritual realm that is the authority of God to make decisions and rule on behalf of the future. So if you're stuck in the past, you're not, you're not in the realm of God. You're not able to use that realm because that realm is about the future. That realm is not about mess right now. That realm is not about woulda, shoulda, coulda, and all the way back there. That's not where God is. The Bible said, for the spirit of the Lord dwells with prudence, which means he takes a rest there, which means he abides there. And what is prudence? Prudence is when a person take care for their future, not for their past. Is anybody getting this today? God help me. Help me today. Help me today to deliver this word. That's why you, that's why you, I used to say all the time, well, why I, I used to ask my pastor that before he went on to be with the Lord. Well, why does he might get everybody else and just get it back? But over here, he said, because it, where God planned to take you, he's not taking them. Where God plans to take you, that's all you, oh, that's all they need for where they're going. But for where God is taking you, it's going to take preparation. Because God is not interested in you just being a talent. He's interested in you becoming a manager. And when you are a manager, I want to make you a master of what I have given you. I want to make you an expert in what you are doing. I want it to be so that you can stand shoulder to shoulder with anybody. And if they got to make a choice, they'll be confused before they reject you. Are you hearing this? Are you listening to what he's saying to you today? You want to be common. You want to be natural. You want it to be easy. You want it to be easy going. Why, why my mama got to die? Why my daddy got to die? And why see my, they got their parents and their brother. Why me? Why me? Everybody is not a manager. And let me help you with something. Look around the world in the earth realm in all the stores. You have many employees, many common people, many people that when one quit, the other can do the job. I can find 50 that can do what you do. McDonald's. Somebody walk in McDonald's and say, I quit. Then fine, let me find another 15-year-old that's excited about getting their first job. Then this one over there, I quit. Well, okay, good. Well, let me find another 17-year-old that's excited about getting their job. Well, somebody else, well, I quit. Okay, good. Well, let me find a mother who got two children and looking for a full-time job, and she can work during the daytime with her children in school. Quit. But when it comes down to a manager saying, I'm quitting, that's a whole nother horse of a different color. Because you're not just going to tap another manager and say, well, just I'll get you there, and I'll just go and find somebody else. Not that easy. Because the manager has to know the ropes. They have to know the intel. They have to know the attacks. They have to know the potential attacks. They have to be able to run that store to anticipate that it might be robbed one day. They have to conduct themselves in a way that they're never short of french fries. They're never short of bread. Are you all hearing what I'm saying? My God. My God. Which means you may have to be the first one there and the last one to leave. Who? But we want to pass. We want to pass. We want the greatness, but we don't want to pay the price to get there. I had somebody to say to me the other day. Uh, I, I was I was telling them about. We haven't even gotten halfway through what God is saying today. I, I was telling them about um, about me wanting to dance and me dancing, and I said when I finally landed. About a week ago, what type of dance I really felt like God wanted me to do. I'm not talking about what everybody else was doing. And so for three and a half years, I've been doing a little bit of this, doing a little bit of that. Doing, and, 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 and finally, the Lord just honed me in. And, 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 and he began to say to me, this is what I want you to do right here. And so when he said that, he said, I want you to master this. Well, then I started reading up, what does it take to master something? 
It takes 10 years. It takes 10 years. And so in my mind, I'm not wanting to be the master tomorrow. I'm not wanting to be the master next week. I've already fixed it in my head that by the time I'm 68 years old, I would have mastered this dance. Well, that's 10 years, but I will be a master. Well, that's 10 years. You will be 68 years old, and I will still be 68 years old if I do nothing. I just said something right there. You need to put some hearts on that screen. It doesn't matter. You're going to still be the same age doing nothing. So you might as well end up being 68 with the promise. Somebody say you just spoke a word right there. I'm going to be 72 years old. I'm going to be 10 years. I'm going to be 50. 50 and still broke if you don't do nothing right now. 50 and still with no knowledge if you don't change right now. 50 and still with no wisdom. 50 and still complaining and looking at what somebody else has and realizing that you don't have that. And the older you get, the more insecure you become about getting there. So he's saying, stop the madness right now. And understand what I'm trying to do for you. Oh, Jesus. So then we come to the place where he says, knowledge. Okay, but wait a minute, Dr. Bynum. Didn't he just say, here we are. We, 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 we. We're there. We're there. We're there. He said, spirit of the Lord, wisdom, understanding, counsel, strength, knowledge. Now, here it is. So, knowledge. <laughs> Why was she in the kingdom for a whole year? Not just getting her body rubbed. But she was there giving her an opportunity to perceive. Giving her an opportunity to be on the inside. Giving her an opportunity to keep her ears open. So she could know what to say to Mordecai. Are you hearing this? Are you hearing this? So then I'm asking the Lord, well, what is the difference between knowledge and understanding? Because when you look up the word knowledge, it says one of the first definitions for the word knowledge is understanding. So I'm saying, well, why would you put two of the same kind of words in the same verse saying I'm getting these seven things when two of them are alike? So am I really getting six? Or am I getting seven? So then, when he said to look it up, it said, go with me, go with me, stay right here, stay right here, my God, stay right here. It says, knowledge, understanding, comprehension, to grasp, to command, to command, to command, to take command, to command. To take charge of, be the leader of, to head it, to control it, to direct it, to supervise it, to oversee it, to require it, to manage it. So the first thing that I must do with my life, if I am to manage the miracle, I must command myself to take charge. I got to get out of the, what you think I should do, seat? I got to get out of the, can I talk to you? I just want, I, I just don't know what my destiny is. You got to get out of that line in a hurry. You got to get out of the realm of depending on somebody because if somebody got to tell you what it is you call to do, you won't keep doing that. Because as long as, as watch this, as soon as they no longer have influence in your ears, you're going to stop doing that. And that's what's happened to many people. Well, I think you should do this, and I think you should do this. No, I think you should hear from God because he's the only one that can sustain you. He's the only one that can keep you motivated and charged about what he told you to do. 
He will go to any lengths to make sure that you keep hitting divine connections until you get to where you need to go. When one thing give up, he'll bring somebody else that you've never met. And they'll speak a word into your life or they'll have a piece of the puzzle. It's a journey that you must take with God just like Noah did when he was doing something that nobody had ever seen before and he had to keep doing it year after year after year after year. He had to keep prophesying. It's going to rain and nobody's seen rain before. He had to keep on prophesying. I'm supposed to build this ark when they were calling him crazy. But he was under the power of the Lord. That wasn't a good idea. That was a God idea. He was called to be the manager of that miracle that was about to hit the earth realm. God, who is he talking to today? Who is he talking to today? Well, somebody said, well, well Dr. Biden, well, well, how could I be assured of that? Because the book of Job 23, 13 through 15, the key in those, in those three scriptures said, for he performs what is planned for me, and he is mindful of many such things. In other words, where is the mind of God concerning me? Where is the mind of God concerning me? He is mindful of what he has planned for me, not what I conjured up. Not what you make it up. Not what you're looking over and seeing somebody else doing. I'm going to do that. No, he is only mindful. His mind is only on that which he has planned for you. And nothing else will work. You can keep on knocking on heaven all you want to. Lord, I want your attention. I want to go over here and make popsicles. Lord, can you just open up a door for me to make popsicles? Because Sister Tuki will be over here. Her and her husband is making popsicles. And they doing the, the, the God, they made a million dollars in one year making popsicles. Can you just let me make pop? No, I called you to make popcorn. You got it confused. Not popsicles. That's their lane. That's their realm. And if you try to jump in that realm, you can do the same thing that they do. Did, and they will succeed and you will fail because that's not my plan for you. Who is God talking to? Good Lord, have mercy, Jesus. Oh, God. Oh, God. What, 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 what? How do I get sucked into that? Dr. Bonham, how do people get sucked into that? They get sucked into it because when you watch a person do something, just like people have gotten on the page and said, you know what, I think I'm going to go on Facebook Live. I think I'm going to do me a live thing. And then all of a sudden they look and they got two people following them and 15 minutes. Why, how does she do that? You know why you get sucked into it? Because that which God calls somebody else to do, he graces them for it. And when they're graced for it, they make it look easy. They make it look effortless, like it don't take nothing but just hit the camera on, put a little makeup on, sit down here and start talking and let the Lord. It's more than that. I'm not just hitting on cameras and lights and sitting here on Facebook talking into a camera with makeup and glasses on. I've been called to do this. And because this is what he planned for me, his mind is here with me. He's mindful of every detail about this broadcast. Are you all hearing me. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. You just knock it on the shoulder. He just ignoring you. Not, I'm ignoring you. I told you to preach. You want to go over here and, 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 and do something else. You want to go over here and sell socks. That ain't what I told you to do. You're in somebody else's lane. Oh, God, have mercy. Woo! Y'all, 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 y'all. Y'all. So that's the first group. So the first group of getting there is do I have understanding? Do I have comprehension? Can I grasp something? Can I arrest something? Can I detain something in my life? Can I hold a vision? Can I hold it captive? Can I nab it by the neck and not let it go? Can I make that vision a prisoner to my life? It's held captive and I will never let it go. Watch this. Y'all going to make me come back on Facebook before the week is out. And I said I, I wasn't going to do it. But anyway, proficiency. 
Proficiency. Proficiency. Proficiency. In other words, what is proficiency? Group number two, proficiency, accomplishment. Virtuosity, finesse. So let's move to the other lane. Let's move to the other lane. Then what is proficiency? Professionalism. Talent. It says professionalism. In other words, I have dexterity. When you go to professionalism, it says dexterity. What is dexterity? You want to sell popsicles and you don't have dexterity. You don't have a knack for it. It's to be talented in it. It's to have a knack for it. It's an artistry. It's the intelligence, the discernment, the shrewdness. The inventiveness. I know how to create different kinds of popsicles. I'm not just using the ones on the stick. I'm making them out of dogs and cats and putting uh, beads in them and jelly beans in them when I freeze them. I know how to be creative. I'm inventive. In other words, the plain definition for this proficiency is do you have plain common sense? Oh God, he is ministering today. And how does that come? Do I have experience in that? Ooh. I want God to just, I want my own business. You need an inventive spirit. I want God to, you need a creative, you got to have a knack for it. You got to have artistry for it. Who am I talking to? Somebody just tapped that screen and said, you talking to me? Dr. Bynum, you are talking to me. You're talking to me. Who? My God. My God. And I'm going to stop here. Because this last one is, is so important because we don't even know how to activate this one with God. Diplomacy. Diplomacy. Esther had to have diplomacy. Diplomacy means she had to be tactful because she was going to have to use wisdom to get around what was about to happen for her people without losing her position in the kingdom and without losing her favor with the king. Diplomacy, discretion. She had to be discreet about how she handled that situation. Diplomacy, politeness, sensitivity, thoughtfulness, discussions, dialogues. I know how to talk to people. I know how to talk with people. I don't talk at people. I'm not condescending. I know how to dialogue with people because if I don't, I cannot be a proper manager of the miracle. Oh, God. Who is he talking to right there? If I always got an attitude, if I'm always snappy, if I don't know how to put some sugar on what I say, because they always say you can draw more bees with honey than you can vinegar. Diplomacy. <laughs> Do I know when and where? Do I know people? Do I know cultures? Do I know who I'm called to? I don't know what I need to master until I know all of this. Other than that, I'm flying by the seat of my pants. Hoping something would happen. Because if you get it by luck, you won't keep it. Because you don't know the system of how you made it become successful. And when you know the system from God, when you got the knowledge of God, when you got the wisdom of God, when you got one of these spirits, one of these seven spirits sitting and resting and dwelling in your life, I don't care how much of a hiccup you got. You know how to keep doing it over and over again. If I lose this, I know how to get it back. Why? Because I know the system of how it works. Who am I helping right here? Or am I helping anybody? Am I helping anybody? Who, my God. Jesus, help me, Holy Ghost. 
y'all. I gotta go. Oof. Y'all gonna make me have to come back tomorrow. I'll be on tomorrow at three, cause I gotta finish this. I can't leave you in the middle like this. Because it's time for you to manage the miracle. I know somebody saying keep going, but I have to stop when the Spirit of the Lord says stop. I'll see you tomorrow, right here, at 3, with me. Y'all getting an extra day this week. And bless your Just gotta leave with this one. Gotta leave you with this one.